Now let's look at the evidence on democracy and good economic reforms. It's a pretty common view that democracy may make good economic reforms more difficult. After all, some people have this intuitive sense that what the people really want isn't actually the best economic policy, and we also see some examples, such as mainland China or also Singapore, which are not traditionally democratic but have done very well in terms of economic growth. But those impressions are misleading. The thing is, when you look at the data, it seems that democracy actually is conducive to good economic reforms. There's a very good paper. It's available online. It's called Democracy and Reforms, and it looks at systematic data from 1960 to 2004. It finds that, on average, democracy predicts good economic reforms. Alternatively, looking backwards, good economic reforms do not predict democracy. So it seems democracy may be the causal agent here. These reforms, by the way, include financial reforms, reforms to capital markets, to banking, product markets, agriculture, and trade, and this was a study of 150 countries. I don't think we can be sure it's the democracy causing the good reforms. It could be that other factors are causing both the democracy and the good reforms, but if nothing else, this paper should disabuse us of the notion that democratic systems of government are going to be bad for reforms. We just don't see that in the data. In this paper, by the way, the result that democracy predicts reforms, it is controlling for global reform waves, quality of the bureaucracy in a country, level of education, political stability, and neighboring country effects. So this result seems somewhat robust. Another way of thinking about the connection between democracy and good reforms is to imagine it in terms of the time series evidence. That is, over time, over the last few decades, the world has become much more democratic and the world has seen a lot of good economic policy reforms. Again, I don't really think we can quite be sure it's the democracy that is causing the reforms, but when you see democracy and the reforms moving together, that makes it harder to maintain the thesis that democracy is somehow bad for economic policy or economic reforms. There's another interesting paper. This one is by Torsten Pearson, and it's called Forms of Democracy. It looks at policy and also economic growth over the time period 1960 to 2000. What this paper finds is that the form of democracy really matters. For instance, Pearson finds that a lot of the benefits of democracy come from systems which are parliamentary rather than presidential. The way those are defined, a system of par is parliamentary if the leader can somehow be dismissed by a vote of no confidence in his or her leadership. Pearson also finds the benefits of democracy tend to come when democracy is permanent rather than temporary, that is, when democracy has been around for a long time. Democracy also does better when it is proportional rather than majoritarian, so think of systems of proportional representation, which give some of the smaller or minority parties seats in the legislature. And Pearson finds that these kinds of democracy, again, the parliamentary, the permanent, and the proportional, tend to predict both growth and good policy. There's a very interesting paper by Danny Roderick called, appropriately, Democracies Pay Higher Wages. Roderick looks at data and he finds that a country such as Mexico, if it were fully democratic, adjusting for other factors, would end up paying wages 10 to 40 percent higher than the wages in Mexico he measured when this paper was written in 1998. Again, we see a correlation between democracy and a good outcome, in this case higher wages. I don't think we can be certain it's the democracy causing the higher wages. Again, there may be other va variables causing both democracy and higher wages, but this correlation between democracies and higher wages is yet another way of seeing why, in economic terms, we should be sympathetic toward democracy rather than fearing it. The final paper I'd like to mention, it's called Do Democracies Have Different Public Policies Than Non-Democracies? This paper actually makes us somewhat skeptical about how much democracies are causing good results. What I find most interesting in this paper is the look at a few different countries over time which move from being non-democratic to being democratic. And some of the examples are Greece, Chile, Portugal, and Spain. What the authors find is that in these cases, once there's a transition to democracy, 
what's in the public budget, the spending and tax policies, they don't actually change very much. One way of interpreting this result is simply to think, as mentioned before, that democracies have their strongest effect both on economic policy and also on corruption when those democracies are in place for a long period of time. That is, when they are permanent as opposed to possibly being temporary. This paper also finds a quite striking result that when countries move from non-democratic forms to democratic forms, it has a big influence on human rights. So if we look at, say, the death penalty, military spending, that tends to go down, civil liberties go up, conscription tends to disappear, and torture tends to go away, all of those seem to be caused by democracy. So at the very worst, it seems that when it comes to economic policy, we see positive correlations with democracy. We're not sure how causal that relationship is, but when it comes to human rights, democracy clearly has a superior record. There's a lot about the operation of democracy which economists either don't know or don't understand or which political scientists haven't really yet pulled out of the data. It's very difficult to establish causal relationships when we're studying categories such as democracy or economic growth at such an aggregate level. But nonetheless, what we do seem to see from the available research is that democracies are very good for human rights, they're at least partially good for economic reforms, and there's really not much evidence that democracies are somehow harming the cause of good economic reforms.